watched the first video. This is a fan fiction, and it's based on The Hobbit. Also, I'm going to I'm going to read um, a little further away from the mic and see. distance from the mic, just to mix it up. Okay, chapter two. Don't you see, Mr. Boggins? This is our only chance. Keeley was looking at him with such imploring eyes that Bilbo didn't have the heart to correct him. They'll notice we're gone soon. This is our only chance to get away and go find Uncle Thorin. So you see, we need you to go to the Prancing Pony and buy, well, whatever we'd need to strike out on our own, Feely said. He looked at Keeley. What will we need? Oh, food, Keeley said vaguely, and I guess rope. Bilbo had never struck off into the wilderness before but he had gone camping as far away as Tucker, Tuckboro. You'll need a tinderbox as well, he said. Yes, that. Feely seized him by the shoulders. We can't do it. The inn is full of dwarves. I had noticed that, Bilbo said. Yes. Yes, it's uh, the delegation traveling from Erebor to Eru Ered Luin. We convinced them to let us come along, but we've been asking about Uncle Thorin all the way. And now we finally found him, and we're only two days behind him, and we're not going to lose him now, are we, Keeley? Feely finished in a rush, and Keely shook his head vigorously. So we need you to buy us the things we need. Feely rummaged in a pouch and grabbed Bilbo's hand. Bilbo stared as a cascade of tiny diamonds fell into his palm. That should cover it, don't you think? I, I should think so. We'll go to the stables and buy ponies, and we'll meet you outside the west gate in an hour. Feely turned him around and pushed him gently back up the hill. Go on, that's a good halfling. We're counting on you. Oh, oh, Keely cried as Bilbo started to walk away. And whatever you do, don't tell our mother we're leaving. That's true, Feely said. Good thinking, brother. You can't miss her, he said to Bilbo. She'll, uh, she'll be wearing midnight blue, and her hair is black, but her beard is nearly all silver now. It's the stress, he added in an undertone. It's really better not to talk to her at all, come to think of it. Her beard, Bilbo said, blinking. Right. Feely nudged him in the back. We've got to hurry. They'll notice we're gone soon, he urged. One hour, the west gate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Boggins, said Keely. And the two of them ran off toward the stables. Bilbo looked down at the small fortune glittering in his hand, frowning. Then he headed toward the prancing pony. And I'll need a week's worth of rations, and some rope, and I guess three canteens, and two more packs. Going camping with friends, are you, Mr. Baggins? Bilbo looked nervously around the common room of the Prancing Pony, filled with dwarves drinking and throwing food. Yes, that's right, with my cousins from Staddle. Good weather for it. 
said Benjamin Butterbur. I'll be right back then. He went to a back room, and Bilbo tried to stand as casually as possible and not make any eye contact. You've met my sons, I see. Bilbo jumped to a female dwarf in a midnight blue dress. Bilbo jumped to find a female dwarf in a midnight blue dress, her silver beard heavy with gem jewelry, standing at his shoulder. Your sons, ma'am. I don't believe I've had the pleasure, though I'm sure they're delightful boys. They are indeed, the dwarf said, brave and good and true, though perhaps just a trifle sheltered and over-trusting. She nodded down at the diamonds in his hands, and Bilbo closed his fingers over them with a guilty start. A lesser man would be on his way home with a pocket full of treasure, and my sons would be stranded and poorer, if possibly wiser, I suppose. It eases my heart to know that someone responsible, level-headed, and kind will be keeping an eye on them. She smiled, but her eyes were somehow sad. Thank you so much, she murmured. I, well, um, you're welcome, Bobo finished lamely, unable to tell her that he had no intention of herring off across the countryside with two strange dwarves. I shall cover for them and make sure no, no one tries to fetch them back. I'll bless you for your kindness, she said. And if you happen to see my brother, her mouth tightened, tell him I believe in him. Half an hour later, nearly buried under the weight of three packs and a box full of spun sugar confectionery, Bilbo Baggins staggered toward the west gate. No more dwarves, he thought angrily to himself hand over the packs, tell them good luck, and get back to the Shire where you belong. His heart fell as he rounded the corner of the gate and saw Feely and Keely standing with three shaggy ponies. Their faces lit up when they saw him. You did it, Keely, Keely whooped, running up to grab the packs out of his hands. Let's get out of here before they come after us. They swung themselves up into their saddles, then turned around and looked at Bilbo. Now, I don't think, I mean, I think it was about time I was getting home, don't you? Stammered Bilbo, looking away from the disappointment on their brothers' faces. We were rather hoping you'd come with us, said Feely. We'd pay you well, of course. Yes, we still haven't had time to even hear how our uncle is doing, Keely chimed in. Or Balin or Dwaylin, Feely added. Good old Balin, said Keely, smiling. And Master D and Mr. Dwalin, or Dwaylin, I'm not sure. I've missed them. Besides, Feely... You seem to know a lot about this traveling business. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly, said Bilbo. They looked at each other, and Bilbo shuffled his feet awkwardly. I really should get back to the Shire. I mean, I've got the sweets. I have to get back, he said hoisting the box in something like an apologetic shrug, and my birthday party to prepare for, and I need to pay the grocer, and weed the window boxes, and you know, stuff. Very well, said Feely, his voice sad. Good luck to you on your road, then. Come along, Keely, he clucked to his pony, and they started off down the road. Watch them go away from Bree, away from the safe walls he knew. Again.
against his will, he heard again Thorin's gruff and contemptuous voice. You would not last a day outside your safe little world. Stop. Wait. He called after Feely and Keely, running toward them. They turned, quick smiles on their faces, and let him catch up. Bilbo stopped to catch his breath. You're going south, he explained, easing. Fornost is north. Oh, Feely and Keely said in unison. Good grief, Bilbo muttered to himself, then raised his voice. I suppose I can travel with you until you catch up with your uncle. But then I'm heading back to the Shire. Beaming, Keely hopped down from his pony to help Bilbo swing into the stirrups of the third pony. The fattest and littlest. You won't regret this, Mr. Baggins. It was lunacy to feel happy that the dwarf had remembered his name correctly. But as Bilbo kicked the pony and it snorted and started to trot north away from Bree, he realized that he was smiling. He wasn't smiling so much six hours later when Feely called a halt for the night and they began to set up camp at the side of the road. I thought there'd be an inn or something, Bilbo grumbled as they rolled out the blankets on the ground. But north of Bree, there was very little but scattered farms, and the suspicious farmers peering out at them did not seem likely to offer hospitality. However, the brothers' spirits were high as they started this small fire with only a few full stunts, tossing a song back and forth between them about a maid with her hair like silk. Even if there were inns, we couldn't stay there, Feely said, interrupting his song to answer Bilbo. They'd think to search there. We're going to have to be cunning and sneaky to avoid recapture, Keely nodded, pleased with himself, and broke into a cheerful whistle as he started piece of wood. Bilbo sincerely doubted an entire diplomatic delegation would get sidetracked looking for two runaway pages or scribes or whatever they were. He thought about telling them that their mother had blessed their enterprise and would be covering for them, but decided to let them enjoy their guile. He settled down on a rock rather than rather gingerly. He'd never ridden for so long in one day and brought up the pressing question for dinner. Feely and Keely looked blank. Well, rations, I guess. Keely pulled a paper wrapped block from his pack, broke off a corner, and nibbled at it. I guess that's food, he said, grimacing. He looked at Bilbo. Don't you have something a little tastier? Bilbo involuntarily clutched at his pack his biscuits and lemon drops, his precious viola tea. There was no possibility these two would appreciate their ex exquisite flavors, and the sponge sugar was for his birthday party. He peeked into the pack, shifting the delicacy safely aside. Well, I have some herbs and a little fine milled flour. If we had some rabbit or fowl, I could probably make some stew. Keely leapt to his feet, his face shining. Then I am your dwarf, Mr. Baggins. He unshouldered his bow and announced, I shall return shortly. Bilbo wasn't sure he felt comfortable knowing Keely was running around with a projectile weapon. Will he be all right? Feely looked unconcerned as he took a drink from his canteen. Oh, don't worry about him. He's the best dwarf I know with the bow. Everyone said it was a silly weapon for a dwarf, but we've been hunting around Erebor, and he nearly never misses with it. Sure enough, Keely returned within an hour with two rabbits. He and Feely managed to dress them with some involved discussion, and soon Bilbo had a small pot of rabbit stew bubbling over the campfire. When Feely ate a spoonful, his eyes widened. This is amazing. He stared down at the spoon. How did you make something so good? Well, the herbs help a lot, Bilbo said. The stew is quite good. And he took another bite, feeling proud. Herbs. You mean those green, flecky things? The brothers poked at their bowls with interest.
first, peppering Bilbo with questions about its preparation in between mouthfuls of ecstatic compliments. Still isn't hard to make, Bilbo pointed out. Kitty scrapped, Kitty scraped the last remains up from the ball with meticulous care and licked his spoon. Will you teach us sometime? Well, Bilbo frowned. I'm only going to be with you for a few more days, so it's going to have to be soon. Oh, I forgot, Kitty said, crestfallen. Then he brightened. But if we can learn to cook a little, we'll be able to cook for Uncle Flory when we see him again. That's a great idea, enthused Feely. He glanced at both Bilbo, who had made an involuntary snorting sound. What's the matter? but I can't imagine your uncle overflowing with gratitude for anything. Feely frowned as if Bilbo had missed the point. Well, he's a little rough around the edges. The edges, Bilbo huffed. Your uncle is without a doubt the most impolite, high-handed, ill-mannered person I've ever met. And I know Lobelia Sackville backhands. So that's saying something. Kitty sat up straight, scowling. See here, Mr. Baggins, he said sharply, his affable tone gone. You don't understand Uncle Thorin at all. He's right, said Feely. Maybe he's not the most affectionate of fellows. But Uncle Thorin has been through a lot, and he's got his reasons for being the way he is. And we won't tolerate speaking people speaking ill of him. They nodded emphatically in unison. Reasons. Bilbo snorted again. I'd like to hear those. Feely and Kitty both leaned forward as if they thought Bilbo would never ask. Well, Feely started, despite Bilbo's stammer that he hadn't meant it literally. That is a story that begins about 200 years ago. sorry if the sound changed halfway through or it sounded worse halfway through I don't know I had to move because someone started cutting their grass and it was really ruining the audio um, it might even still be in this a little bit I couldn't you know I could only go so far and um, anyways, I couldn't, I didn't have another time to record it, and I was already halfway through, and I didn't want to stop it and make it a two-part, uh, video. I just wanted to do one, you know, one part. Um, so I hope it's not too bad, and I hope you can enjoy it, and let me know if you guys like the, um, whispering from a little further away. If you do, I can, you know, do more of those videos in the future as well. Um, I will see you guys Wednesday, and don't forget to hit that like button, and subscribe, and share, I'd really appreciate it, we're at 400 subscribers now, we're getting so close to 500, thank you all.